Hello and welcome to the 2021 Australia and New Zealand EdTech 50. My name is Patrick Brothers. I'm the co-CEO of Holland IQ and I'm joined by David Linky, Managing Director of EduGrowth, Australia's Education Technology and Innovation Hub. Hi, David. Thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, Patrick. Really appreciate it. Uh, excited to be here and to hear about these really amazing and innovative Australian and New Zealand EdTech companies we're going to uh, hear about today. Awesome. We're also going to meet five awesome leaders from across the region, leading education and technology companies. Um, I'm looking forward to introducing them after we make our start. As usual, we've got an action packed 45 minute agenda. I'm going to hand over to David shortly to share some insights about the Australian EdTech ecosystem. We'll quickly touch on the methodology and eligibility of the ANZ EdTech 50 before we announce and share with you that cohort. Uh, and as I mentioned, and perhaps the most exciting part of the session, we'll be hearing from and meeting some of the leaders of the ANZ EdTech 50. Five leaders will be sharing a five minute overview of the work that they're doing and the impact that they're having in education in Australia and New Zealand and around the world. For those of you new to Holland AQ, we're a global impact intelligence platform. We focus on education, healthcare and climate. We're a global team. We're headquartered in New York now, hubs in Sydney, Oxford, Bangalore, Rio. We have analysts in a number of other places around the world as well. We're very lucky to have some incredible customers, hundreds of customers around the world, including the World Bank, Gates Foundation, very influential large impact investors, universities, technology companies and innovators around the world as well. Let's, let's hear about the Australian EdTech ecosystem and to do so, David, take it away. Thanks very much, Patrick. It's been a pleasure to be able to partner with Holland IQ again to help you find these uh, ANZ50 today. And for those who haven't met EduGrowth, we are Australia's education technology and education innovation hub. And really, we are here to support the connection between EdTech companies, education providers and industry stakeholders of which Holland IQ is an incredibly important one. So I thought I might begin by giving you a little bit of overview of where we're at as far as Australia's EdTech ecosystem. And I've got a, a number of stats that I can share with you. So firstly, there are 600 Australian EdTech companies founded by Australians here or internationally. So there may be some companies actually around the world that we consider Australian companies because they're founded by Australians. There are 13,000 people employed in the sector and we generate $2.2 billion, of which about six or 700 million of that is export revenue. So it's a fantastic export market for the country. Some insights to the sector of these 600 companies, 48% of them are less than half a million dollars worth of revenue, 27% of them between half a million and two million, and 15% of them above two million. And we separate out consultants because it's an incredibly important part of the, the ecosystem here in Australia. This gives you an idea of the revenue and in simple terms, if you generate more than $2 million in this country, it is very likely you are an exporter. Almost 100% of companies above $2 million worth of revenue in Australia, in the tech sector exporting um, revenue, which is fantastic. Also, what you can see is the portion of their revenue that's coming. Just to give you a quick, quick snapshot, 37% of the revenue for established companies is coming offshore. This is the most important, interesting thing about the Australian EdTech ecosystem. And you get this opportunity to see the world, Patrick, and you see what's happening in other sectors. And we are very clearly 71% of our companies in Australia are focused on supporting existing, existing institutions. It's about improving learner outcomes from the existing system, which is a great piece of advice or sort of a great uh, thing for the governments across the country are building sectors in which people want to be in. They don't want to displace it. Uh, what are we building? We're building admin systems, student management systems, learning management systems, and you can see 52% of our companies are focused on producing content or content management systems, which goes back into that narrative of improving learner outcomes from existing institutions. This is just an interesting piece of data. A couple of days ago when I was putting this together, I thought, let's just have a quick look at something that we can't get anywhere else. And what this is telling us, and the narrative that I see here is that if you're building a K-12 EdTech company, all the best to you. You are doing some hard yards. EdTech's hard enough, but K-12 is even harder. You can see that they much, much harder to scale. You can see that the number of employees that you engage starts to differentiate from the rest of the market, which basically means that you are doing more with less. So 
all the power to your fantastic work guys and finally i thought this was a really nice stat to try and give you a really clear visual representation of how quickly this sector is growing the sector doubled between 2014 and 2019 and i can't wait to pull out some data from our 2020 and 2021 census which shows that uh, exponential growth going even further so that gives you a quick insight to the australian edtech ecosystem i want to just acknowledge all of our foundation and strategic partners who have helped us along the way and are incredibly important to our sector and back to you patrick awesome that is such a great wrap david i'm i'm, I'm also relieved that some of the stats we're about to see correlate with with your data which which makes perfect sense as well and when you add new zealand in uh, we must have an ecosystem of close to 700, 750, maybe even 800 companies. That's 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 wonderful. And uh, kudos to you, David, and to the whole team at EduGrowth for the work that you've done. No doubt you've played a really big part in that acceleration from EdTech in the region as well. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to the ANZ EdTech 50. <clears throat> I need to touch on eligibility and on focus. Uh, firstly, we are focused on identifying young, fast growing, innovative, learning and upskilling startups in, in the region. That is the focus and the purpose of this, which is to shine a light on the younger organizations which are growing fast and creating impact. As a general rule, as part of the eligibility, we consider that organizations need to be less than 10 years old we do have some exceptions um, however where that's a little bit longer geographically wise um, as david mentioned as well we look at teams that are headquartered in australia or new zealand or predominantly focused on the market that is they have a, a you know more than 80 percent of revenue or customers in the region as well from a status perspective they have to be pre-exit ed tech startups not acquired not listed not subsidiaries of a larger company or controlled by a larger investor group um, from a scope perspective we're focused on technology not just software um, we do include some of the boundaries of job tech and hr tech as we all know that is a, a blurry boundary these days as well and as such some of the standard inclusions are listed companies private equity sponsors and subsidiaries and mature incumbents. So you won't see here the superstars like Janison, like Education Perfect, like Open Learning. They are all big, uh, grown up, mature companies that are now listed and, and exited and not a focus of the ANZ EdTech 50, although, of course, having incredible impact in their own right. The criteria and methodology we use is essentially our startup rubric at Holland IQ, which covers five parts. Firstly, market, the quality and attractiveness of the market, the product, the quality and uniqueness of the product, demonstrated impact of the product, the team that it, it has the expertise and diversity it needs to succeed, capital, which is not just about raising money, it's about demonstrated ability to have sustainability and continued financial health in order to generate and secure the resources that it needs to achieve its vision. And then finally, momentum, and that is positive changes in the size, the velocity, the impact that the organization is having over time. So without further ado, I'm going to share this year's 2021 Australia and New Zealand EdTech 50. Just going to leave this here for you to soak it up and scan and touch on some of the key categories that we've called out here assessment and credentials top left international education and language learning was always big in australia and new zealand online learning a lot of teams focus there top right workforce and skills as we come around clockwise digital content we saw from david stats plenty of that in the australian ecosystem xr and steam um, lots of focus on steam lots of focus on immersive technology in the region <clears throat> and again, David, I was I was relieved slash unsurprised to see the management systems. Lots of focus from supporting uh, institutions with management systems and, and technology as part of the 50 as well. Before I jump into a couple of cuts, David, any reflections as you see this year's cohort? Yeah, I'm, I'm really intrigued by the cohort here. And, and I agree with you around the idea of management systems right like the the reality is i think in australia and new zealand we are very much focused on improving outcomes within existing institutions and there's no doubt that part of that story is trying to digitize and that digital transformation of institutions so there's lots of interesting things here 
there are a couple of really interesting companies that have appeared this year that were not on the last year's list and some of them are really intriguing and, and one of them that comes to mind and it just happens to be right in front of me which is when you think about a company like neat which is really changing what they've been doing right like the reality is this is a pretty old company that has completely transformed in the last couple of years and um, you know, kudos to the management team that have been able to achieve that. But I think that it goes to show that the transformation in education doesn't necessarily have to come from the startup tomorrow. It can actually come from a startup mentality within existing companies. And there are some incredibly interesting companies on here. And, and, I, and I, I'm intrigued to see where they go in the next couple of years, because I think that there is some interesting observations from it. But no, a really exciting list. And the thing that's always hard or interesting for me is as we go through this process of whittling down is those that don't make the list. Like we could create another yeah. top, you know, we, if we could go to the top 200, maybe we're going to get lobbying because that's what happens for Pat is I, I get, I get the, the LinkedIn messages going, how come I wasn't all this? I got all this and, and that's fantastic stuff. So i um, really yeah. excited to see what happens as the years go ahead. Yeah, that's such a great call. I, I think it, you can't understate how difficult it is to get to 50. And that really is a testament to the strength and the quality of the region as well. Uh, likewise, I, I have plenty of guilty moments for teams that didn't make the list, but just see such such incredible innovation across the board. Um, look, I, it was remiss of me not to mention at the start that the chat is open. I'd love to hear your observations as you reflect. Let's cut look at a couple of cuts from the 50 before we just hear from five of the teams who are part of the EdTech 50. Um, you can see here, we've got a really strong representation in K-12 in the EdTech 50, uh, ANZ EdTech 50 as well, pretty even across workforce and higher education. On the right hand side, you can see there's a little bit more concentration from last year's cohort um, to higher ed and workforce. We've had some of last year's cohort have also graduated. I'm thinking of Cluey, for example, that was in last year's cohort um, is is now a listed company. And so uh, maybe some of those K-12s have have gone on um, gone on to, to the bigger picture here. Um, just on age, I think this is a really interesting cut, especially given David's stats for Australia for the ecosystem doubling since 2015. You can see there's 42%, nearly 50%. Well, if you add in the 10 year, that's what, 65% are older than seven years. So we should have a very strong cohort coming through and a change, I suspect, in the next two to three years as that, that cohort really starts to grow, um, get to their third, fourth, fifth year of maturity as well. Can I just throw something in there as well, Pat, just to think about, which I didn't include it in my include in my statistics, but we, we've done an analysis of the uh, growth rate of Australian tech companies. A really interesting observation in Australia is that we still have a very, really large, what I'm going to refer to as an SMB market in EdTech. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're really fantastic businesses that have been around for a long time, making great revenue for uh, the founders and their families but they're not on that scale to become that unicorn. They're actually doing something really different. And I think it's really interesting. And this is confirmed here. I think the statistic is companies above 10 years old in the Australian market, are something like about 36% of them are still less than $2 million worth of revenue, right? But they're yeah. still fantastic businesses. They just happen yeah. to be on a different path. And that's a valid yeah. way of building an ed tech business as well. Because you've got to be for the long haul. You can't, you don't, 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 don't yeah. start an ed tech found, uh, sorry, an ed tech startup because you're going to, you know, exit in three years time. It's not a three year journey. That's a great call. That's a great call out. Um, look, lastly, I think we see here again, we're using all on IQ's subsectors here, really strong representation in the EdTech 50 for management systems. As we go around the clock, an equal split between digital content, online learning, workforce and skills. International Ed always features up there on the leaderboards in ANZ. <laughs> and then STEAM, advanced technology and testing. Anything here, David, that catches your eye? Uh, yeah, the, the thing that, that I, again, it just reminds me of how much the sector is about producing the existing stuff. And it'll be interesting to see, I, I'm interested to see the tracking of this data over the next couple of years of where international education goes with the pressures that the sector has faced, both in domestically and internationally. But I think that the other one that's interesting is advanced technology. As as education institutions start to adopt or get comfortable adopting new pieces of 
um, a technology, and especially on the bleeding edge, I think we'll see that sector grow really quickly. And you may have to spend some time at Holland IQ working about whether or not you put artificial intelligence into its own subsector at some point in time and machine learning and uh, immersive technologies i think you referred to as xr you know just interesting what that's going to look like over the next couple of years yeah it's it's super tricky because kind of everyone is getting more advanced and advanced tech is seeping its way into every system so we are at one of those taxonomy things we're always wrestling with for sure absolutely all right let's hear from these five teams it is a real pleasure to introduce Claire Orange, founder of DigiSocial. Claire is up super early on the west coast of Australia in Perth. Claire, we are so lucky that uh, that you've joined us this morning. I'm going to hand over to you to share a bit more about DigiSocial. Thanks for having me. Uh, so DigiSocial, uh, we only launched commercially this year, but we were in our research trial, independent research trial, last year and our story really began uh, quite tragically so I've been a therapist for a very long time for 28 years um, and part of my role is uh, working with families at the worst times in their lives and DigiSocial started with the promise to a family of a young man who unfortunately chose this very permanent solution to a temporary problem when he was he was overwhelmingly trolled and bullied online and out of that came that realisation that actually we put our children in a world that we don't expose children to normally. We never put children in high risk situations without enough education. We never show them a swimming pool and say, that's the deep end, that's a shallow end, see how you go. Uh, we teach them the skills and we'd stack those skills. Yet in digital life, we immerse our children in this environment. And the statistics really tell the whole the entire picture. They are very alarming. So since May of last year, uh, as we were getting into COVID, more people at home, we've seen a 122% increase in child exploitation materials online. But outside of that, we're looking at, you know, more than a quarter of our students uh, between year four and year nine experiencing cyberbullying on a weekly basis, and that's significant. We're seeing 69% of our boys accessing really inappropriate content, which is changing their young lives, it's changing their behaviours and it's changing the way they're going through the building of their sexual health. Our girls are out there doing high risk behaviours, sending pictures online that are part of a permanent digital record for these, for these young people. And yet we kind of leave this education to chance. So that was the promise that I delivered on to this family that this should be made accessible to every single Australian child in every Australian classroom um, and beyond, out into the wider world. And we've delivered on that promise. So DigiSocial is uh, three interacting platforms. Uh, the, the, the student have their platform, uh, the parent and the educator. So this is sold as a school subscription. It's only for year five and six students. We're really honing in on those preteens as they start to go into that self-awareness, sexual awareness and, and identity in their group. We really want to target hard because it's much easier to teach a 10 year old than it is to tell a 14 year old anything. Well, in my experience of raising four boys, this seems to hold true. Um, so we have a student platform. Um, within a school, children go on there. It looks, feels and performs like social media, except it's clever. So we ask schools to turn off all other comms for these children, no other messaging services. They're forced to use DigiSocial. Kids love it. Um, they go on and we use artificial intelligence to analyse and moderate all of their picture and word content. And that little fella down there, Digi, pops up. And uh, should they engage in a bit of uh, exclusion, cyber bullying, putting someone down, hate speech, racism, posting lyrics of inappropriate songs, uh, posting links of inappropriate videos, posting photos with their school logo showing, uh, all of those things that we know are danger points for children. DG pops up and says, hang on, you know better than that. Um, on the third time a child gets taken off to watch a brief animation that's related to their action. And we have heaps of these videos, uh, little videos on the system. Uh, so children are learning about everything from green time, eye health, sleep, all the way to the top end of town, like oh, pornography, 
grooming, but all put in child speak, so it's all aligned to the curriculum. Parents have their own learning platform. We know that parents like to engage with online learning. These are brief videos, so we've gone for the three to five minute video. Um, we have lots of content on there. When a parent watches, they add points onto their children's profile, and children need those points to be able to chat buy gifts, buy um, a whole range of emojis, upgrade their avatars. So we're engaging parents in the learning of the children as well, as well as their own learning. And then educators have full visibility to everything that goes on. So we're really uncovering some of the unseen things in children's world and exposing everyone that surrounds that child, their village, uh, to the learning that's available through DigiSocial. Uh, so we are very lucky to have uh, Maggie Dent as one of our very proud ambassadors. Um, but across Australia, um, and indeed, as you can see there across the world, uh, we're seeing children loving engaging with this content. Uh, and we've certainly had some fantastic feedback. We're a BU list at school, which means we're one of the most highest rated evidence-based programs in Australia. And of course, we're aligned to the, the curriculum as well. And one of the best things is it's very easy to implement. Uh, we're led by a, a, a team with lots of experience. So there's me with lots of content experience. Um, and we have some great funders as well and uh, have just opened another funding round. Uh, so that's going to be a bit of excitement in my immediate future. Um, but we do have this vision. We have this vision that if we could change and save the lives of one million Australians every year, what a massive difference that would make moving forward at an economic, at a social, and right down there at an individual level. So we're really proud to take our technology out to the world. Wow, super impressive, Claire. And as you said, like it's so, just so important in in the environment that our children are in today. And I'm just so, so pleased that someone of your experience and a mother of four boys, no less, uh, is leading a leading a, a team like this. Thank you so much for joining us today. Congrats on the work that you're doing and all the best of luck with this next fundraising and, and all the work that your team doing. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick and David. Well done, Claire. Thanks, Claire. All right, moving on to Octopus BI. It's a pleasure to introduce Hansa Wijion Sundara. Hansa, I'd love to hear more about Octopus BI. Thanks, Patrick, and thanks, David. Um, uh, Octopus BI uh, is an Australian-based education technology platform, uh, technology company focused on making highly complex education data readily accessible and actionable. We are a passionate team of business analysts, data scientists, technical innovators, entrepreneurs who believe in the power of education and the data insights to transform learning outcomes and lives. Let's look at the problem we solve in education. We know that technology is at the core of our children's education more than ever before. We know that education institutes collect now collect terabytes of data and everything's digital. We know that the condition teachers are in now, especially after the pandemic, makes data more critical than ever before. And finally, we know that education institutes use multiple systems. There's no one single system. The problem is that education data is stuck inside systems that are difficult to access, difficult to extract, and difficult to transform and get a meaning out of. Teachers aren't data scientists or analysts, uh, yet the expectation is that each educator or teacher will be making database decisions in the classroom while providing data-informed instructions. And to make things worse, edtech companies that contribute to this problem, they even struggle with their own data and uh, their challenge uh, by the ways of making that data available for external uh, parties. That's where Octopus BI come in. We have built a unified single platform that can transform complex education data into meaningful insights and make it accessible and actionable. Let's look at how we do this. We have built a cloud-based software as a services platform that can provide the full life cycle of data analytics to our clients. Our clients can benefit from simple, instant, actionable analytics to completely mature and highly sophisticated and bespoke data projects. Our Octopus BI uh, data analytics layer can sit on top of any edtech platform and add additional data analytic capabilities to these products.
with our platform, now we have been able to work with diverse client base in different geographies. In the K-12 space, we are soon going to complete work with a school group that has schools in 20 countries. In the vocational and higher ed space, we are starting to work with clients to extend their product capabilities and have partnered with a leading vocational SIS provider to serve up insights. In the corporate space, we are uh, working with companies to look at employee learning and development journeys. When you look at partnerships, um, Octopus BI is a partner-led company. We work closely with partners to add value to their products and services. Let's look at K-12. In K-12, uh, it's all about student growth, achievement, and well-being. We always talk about a 21st century learner. And with our analytics, now schools are able to access more insight than just grades or attendance and get a holistic picture of the student. This helps educators to intervene early and impact students' growth. In vocational and higher ed space, the most important factors are student experience, completion, well-being, and dropout rates. We are starting to work with a vocational technology provider to identify different kinds of risks that can contribute to attrition. The idea is to give actionable insights to their clients before it's too late so they can help out their students. In the corporate space, we are working with an automotive provider who runs world-class training programs for their employees. Think about a scenario where uh, they introduce a new electric car. They want to know if their staff are qualified to work on the, those vehicles. Do they have the right knowledge, right certification? That visibility is extremely important, and that's what we can provide. And finally, with partnership, there is a uh, there is an important decision that tech companies need to make. Data is a key requirement for every customer going through a renewal or any significant uh, procurement process. And we know that build your own technology, especially in the data space, is a two-year and seven-figure investment. What if you could leverage an existing vendor in the market and realize the top-line opportunity in three to six months? For many ed tech leaders and founders, there is the, that's a no-brainer. We have a lot of ed tech companies here today. I would like to ask them to contact us if you are still thinking about this. If you need a partner who can surface your data in a more meaningful way inside your product that can increase revenue and reduce churn, my contact information is available here. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Hansa. It makes complete sense watching the digital transformation in K-12 and higher ed and ed tech that there would be a platform focused on 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 the aspects that you are and really fascinating to see that you're also supporting ed tech companies as, as well that's a that's a really interesting mix there too so hey thank you so much for joining us today hansa sharing more about octopus bi thank you for the work that your team are doing and the impact that you're having across the ecosystem as well thanks patrick thanks for having us thanks david great stuff hansa thanks all right, moving right along. It's a pleasure to introduce Lisa Vincent. Lisa is the CEO at How To. Lisa, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Pat, and to Holland IQ for the opportunity to present How To uh, today at the 2021 ANZ EdTech 50 webinar. It's really brilliant to be here. So a bit about my background. So after working in HR and learning roles for companies like Ernst & Young, Telstra and AMP, I knew there had to be a better way to deliver organisational learning. So in 2000, I teamed up with my business partner, Jenny Boltrop, and we set out to transform the way people learn through the use of smart technology. We built a smart, uh, profitable multi-million dollar business, Savvy, and we've serviced hundreds of large corporate and government customers across all industry sectors. We then became curtailed by our human resources and a little frustrated by traditional e-learning production that wasn't fast enough or scalable enough. So we expanded our vision and poured our expertise into a SaaS platform that would enable others to create their own digital learning in workplaces and how to was born. A bit about the problem. So we have a skills gap crisis in Australia and globally. And at the same time, organisations recognise the key role they need to play to fill this gap. But most organisations are really struggling and they don't know how to do it. Atlassian futurist Don Price says, 
If companies can't reskill their employees, these companies won't exist. He describes this as an arms race. And organisations are also grappling with the knowledge drain when people move on. And traditional e-learning creation is expensive, time consuming, and there's often a lack of expertise internally in terms of how to do it. And the quality and the outcomes from this online learning can be quite mixed. So how to solves this problem. How to is an AI enabled upskilling platform. It democratizes and accelerates the learning content creation process. It drives a modern learning culture where great learning can be created and shared by anyone. How to is often been described as the Canva for e-learning. So let me just take you a little bit through how it works. So when you come into the tool, you enter a learning outcome you want for your audience. So for example, in an organization, you might need to create some content to help your people prevent financial crime, to support the company's change program. So you first enter a skill you want your learners to acquire. You're then served a pre-designed learning experience consisting of a sequence of interactions based on cognitive and learning science. All you need to do is tweak the content, choose media from the library, and within minutes you're creating an engaging piece of learning that works on all devices, can be distributed to learners quickly and easily. So you're saving time, money, reducing uh, costs, improving performance. How to makes the best quality content in the shortest period of the time, and we're also the first tool to meet international accessibility standards giving everyone equal access to learning, including those who are living with a disability. The digital learning market is huge, 250 billion now, and set to reach 450 billion by 2026. And we're confident we're gonna win and take market share in this rapidly growing global market. How to is forging a new category in digital learning called the creator platform. We're the only tool that's integrated the power of learning science to empower others to create great learning. And the only tool that actually checks your learning content to make sure it meets accessibility standards. We sell how to on subscription with different plans available for, for different content creators. A creator plan is monthly or annually on subscription um, and it's perfectly designed for medium or larger size organizations for say 10 to 50 content creators. The learning can be published on any learning management system or learning experience platform. We've also launched a growth plan, which is an all in one platform that has content creation, off the shelf content and learner distribution. And here's our, some of our fabulous customers who've already joined our community since we launched 18 months ago. A little bit on our traction. So we launched in, in late February 2020, just before COVID hit. We've had a huge amount of growth since then. Um, we've, we've won a number of Australian grants, including uh, Accelerating Commercialization Grant, Boosting Female Founders. Uh, we've won an International Brand Hall Award. We've tripled our team. Uh, we've got 13,000 le learners on the platform. We're ISO 27001 accredited, and we just recently completed our $2.5 million round with um, Molus, Jellix, and Aliavia. So look, thank you again um, for the opportunity to, to tell you a little bit more about how to today. Um, please reach out if you'd like to join our quest to make great digital learning available for all. Thank you. So impressive, Lisa, I have no idea how you achieved all of that in 18 months or so. Really, really impressive. And brilliant great. team, brilliant, <laughs> brilliant team. team. Right, <laughs> yeah, the secret recipe, of brilliant Absolutely. team. Absolutely. Yeah, no. So and a, and a, and a reskilling and upskilling platform um, out of a pandemic yes. might be uh, in high demand, Lisa. Yes. So your email address might get a bit of a workout. Okay, brilliant, bring it on, two, bring it on, thank you. <laughs> awesome, super impressive, Lisa. Hey, thanks for sharing uh, how to with us all. and. And congratulations on the work that you're doing and, and impact you're having. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. All right, moving right along, we've got Scott Tongs, co-founder and director at, at Teach Starter. Thanks, Patrick and David. It's um, great to be recognised in the Holland IQ EdTech 50. Um, 
Look, at Teach Starter, uh, our mission is to spark more aha moments in the classroom, those precious moments of magic where learning happens. You know, we know that teachers are time poor and have an ever-growing list of administrative tasks that often require after hours work, on weekends. Um, they just simply don't have enough time to develop additional differentiated teaching resources. And this was something that my co-founder and wife um, experienced firsthand as a primary school teacher. And so I guess, you know, what is Teach Data? Well, Teach Data is a subscription service that provides K to six teachers with digital teaching resources and tools across all of the key learning areas, from downloadable resources, units and lesson plans, to interactive widgets, resource generators, and much more. Um, all of our curated content is aligned to the Australian curriculum, as well as the state-based curriculums, and also the Common Core and the Texas Essentials curriculum in the US. Um, now, I'm not sure what's going on with that slide. It's a bit bright, but you can kind of see our, our, uh, our products uh, that we offer there. Um, so really, I mean, why do we do all of this? Um, it's just what our purpose, which is, you know, Teach Show exists to unlock the passion, purpose and potential for teachers so that they can expand what's possible for every student. Um, you know, we really have this, this shared purpose with our teachers to, to make sure that, that they really are, you know, giving our students the best possible future. Um, since we launched, uh, my wife and I launched the website um, in 2012, we've bootstrapped the company um, and we have a growing library of curated resources um, of around 14,000. Um, we now count one third of all Australian primary school teachers as paying customers um, and more teachers from the US and the UK are joining us every day. Uh, we opened a second office in Austin, Texas um, about two years ago and we're continuing um, to, to grow in, in the US and other international English speaking markets. Uh, the great part about all of this is that teachers really do love us. Um, and you know, we, we believe in the power of good teachers who are armed with the best tools to teach. And that's what we are really trying to provide. Um, as you can see here from some of our, our, our countless number of reviews, um, we've been able to develop a, a really, really strong product market fit where our teachers really feel aligned to, to our brand and aligned to what we're offering and really feel like Teach Starter is there to support them and that we're, we're there with them. You know, we're a team of, of teachers and educators who, who understand what they're going through and, and are really there to, to support and um, ensure that they succeed. And ultimately, Teach Starter is, you know, we, we want to have energized teachers, inspired classrooms and a brighter future. You know, that's really what Teach Starter is and that's what we're, we're trying to achieve. And, and um, the growth that we've had to date has, has, you know, blown away my wife and I, you know, from the, the early days when we started uh, work in a share house um, bedroom to, to now having an office in, in Brisbane and, and in, in Austin and a, a growing team. So it's been a great journey and uh, we're excited to see where it goes. That's awesome, Scott. It's an inspirational story, uh, all that you've achieved. And one of those teams that's been, you know, hard at it since 2012. I've no doubt there's blood, sweat and tears on that journey. Um, and I mean, it doesn't surprise me, right? Teach Starter loves teachers because it sounds like a teachers loves Teach Starter because, because you love teachers, because it's clearly your mission is to support them and, and empower them. And, and who doesn't want more for their own children than, a, than an empowered, kind of energised, creative teacher to to unlock their potential so congrats scott super impressive can't wait to see where you take teach starter from here as well thanks patrick fantastic scott well done cheers david all right thank you so much scott introducing lucky last ben hallett ceo and co-founder of vigo hi everybody it's absolute pleasure to be here today um thank you so much uh, to the holland iq team and to edgy growth uh, we really appreciate being recognized here and uh, at, at Vigo, our mission is to champion all learners. So behind what we do, from our perspective, and I'm sure a number of the people in this call as well would agree, you know, education is both that social and academic experience. And we really see in the market, there are so many amazing companies really going after that academic experience and shifting that to become digitally native. But the space that we really fit, uh, focus on is that social space the interaction between your peers, your tutors, your mentors, your counselors, your advisors, all these other humans inside of an institution who are there to support you on your, uh, on your education journey. That's the space that Vigo plays in. And really our mission is to 
prevent university students from falling through the cracks of social support. And the reason we started this business be was because of our own friendships uh, at university and the number of friends we saw fall through those cracks in the pre-COVID environment, let alone what we are now seeing uh, in the post-COVID or still going COVID uh, environment. So I'm happy to say that we are now helping industry leading universities across the globe reinvent their student experience. Here's just a, a select number of our university partners. We work with some of the, uh, the most prominent universities in the world, some of the largest ones, some of the smallest ones uh, across Australia, the UK, and we are, now, uh, we are now branching into the US as well. I'm also happy to report that one of our customers recently uh, invested in us, Australian Catholic University, and we're really excited to see universities, more universities investing into the ed tech space. We think that's a really cool um, an important step for universities and we want to see more of that uh, happen. So to give you an idea of what we do, um, students with our platform, students are able to engage with the support that they need wherever they are in the world, whenever they need it. Our focus here is to really make that support relationship uh, digitally native, asynchronous and truly borderless. The, for educators, there's a lot of different things that we do for them. Uh, but essentially, we help them achieve much more with much less. So we provide them with a simple and central platform to organize all of their student support services and to really shift them to become digitally native for the new world. In doing that, our platform gives them invaluable data insights that have really never been um, possible before about how students are interacting with each other with their support services, what's not working, what is working really well, and how can we improve and iterate in the moment. And then finally, our platform is giving them a cost-effective and scalable solution to modernize their deli delivery as so many more administrators are being asked to do much more with much less. And our clients are seeing great results, um, up to an eight times increase in the number of students engaging in services when we take them online. Um, we do a 62% reduction in the students considering dropping out. And we've been able to demonstrate an 80% reduction in administration costs to be providing these in-house support services. We don't have time to go through this, but to give you guys an idea about the breadth of what our platform does, the relationships that it handles, it really does go across the whole academic support, um, your tutors, your, your uh, workshops, your professional support, your career advisory, industry mentoring, but really also the well-being support um, from your first year mentoring, which I would argue is the most crucial support service at any university, um, all the way through to say your counselors or your very targeted at-risk support. And the platform, it really focuses on taking those relationships, giving them all the digital tools to interact online wherever they are in the world and making that experience quite highly personalized. And, I, you know, in the spirit of um, today, I wanted to talk about some of the ways that we're really thinking uh, differently in this space. And one of the key ways we do that, apart from, um, you know, just hiring amazing people from very diverse backgrounds, we also, also work with amazing uh, partners uh, you know, as advisors, as investors, um, as contractors as well. Some of the people in this space who are helping us really rethink what's possible in the university space, are, you know, Chris Saad, uh, ex-head of product of Uber, uh, Professor Belinda Tynan, one of the most um, prominent higher education figures in Australia. Um, and most recently, Dr. Steve Carter, the ex-chief data scientist of eHarmony, um, who was really helping us rethink you know, what's possible in terms of student connection um, and how the, who these students should be really introduced to for their, uh, to give them the most, oh, sorry, I have an alarm going off telling me I need to shut up. All right, that's it from me, guys. Um, thank you so much for listening. You know, we'd love to talk to anybody, any institution uh, who is interested in taking their student experience to the next level. Cheers, guys. Really cool, Ben, really cool. And kind of not surprising you're experiencing the growth that you, you are given given the focus of the team and the quality of the product. Obviously, we've been following you and the team for, for a long time. So exciting to see you going on to new horizons as well and growing around the world. Congrats. Thank you very much. Awesome, Ben. All right. We are, believe it or not, we're on time. Um, we promised 45 action-packed minutes. I just wanted to, before we signed off, David, kind of get any reflections from you on hearing from those five teams and, and the cohort for 2021. 
I guess as I as I listen to the five that we 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 only get to meet five of the fifty, um, every single one of them would have a similar story. I sort of take away a couple of things, and it's really clear to me that these are people who are incredibly passionate about outcomes for individuals, right? They were untalked about learners, and the thing that I was sort of, I've took I've taken a whole bunch of notes, but the one thing that I sort of was writing down here, and it's for all those people who are joining in today or listening to this at other point who've got an edtech idea. I, I hope that you take away from this incredible laser-like focus on a problem, solving that problem, building the commerce as the second stage of it, and then expanding the pro the product to impact more and more learners. But I think about that laser-like focus on a problem and a defined problem. So that, that's sort of my immediate observation. But I'll, I'll throw it back to you, actually. I'll throw it back to you, Pat, in that last year when Maria, you and I were doing this wrap up for the ANZ 2020, I, I asked you whether or not we might have Australia's unicorn, the first unicorn on the list. And Go One has gone on to become a unicorn. I don't know if they were first or not, but they certainly, can we claim it? Can we, can we claim the ANZ 50 and the work that Holland IQ did and Edgebrook supported <laughs> help them get to their cop? Can we claim that? I think we can claim that we we really are identifying some of the most prominent, promising and innovative companies. And I think, you know, I, I, no doubt Go One was on the shortlist for that unicorn candidate and they've, they've blown that um, off the charts. I wonder how many more there are on this. Not that that's the ultimate objective because, you know, I, I, I get really warmed by hearing from the teams uh, like you and just how just how passionate they are about the, the actual uh, focus of learning and impact um, too. So it's it's always an absolute pleasure and, and great to hear from those teams and the work that they're doing. Um, David, anything from EduGrowth we should be keeping an eye out on over the next few weeks and months? Yeah, absolutely. We've got some really big programs happening at the moment. If you're a Victorian-based edtech company, you should have a look at the uh, edtech innovation alliance we're doing with Global Victoria. We've got a program coming out Right now, we're doing some work with the New South Wales government. So if you're a New South Wales EdTech company, have a look out for our going global partnership with them to help you go to India. And just a reminder to everyone that the, the, the Australian EdTech directory, which exists, which gives you a great snapshot of Australia's EdTech ecosystem that we have built in partnership with Austrade, so it can help take these stories around the globe. So there's there's lots happening and there's always more coming out. I, I'm not sure how the, the team keep up with it, but uh, we're, we're fighting the good fight to advocate for the sector. Oh, you're doing an amazing job, mate. Um, really making big impact, and it's clear from the, some of the partnerships that you've you've established lately. I look rounding out everyone. The EdTech Fifty is now live at hollandq.com. We'll be sharing out through social today as well. Uh, everyone who registered will receive a recording of this webinar pretty much five minutes after we we wind up here. Um, if you're in higher ed, you might be interested in our strategic shifts webinar. There are a lot of people around the world signed up on. Friday, I think it is, hollandiq.com slash webinars. You'll hear from Maria Spees, our co-CEO, and our um, academic in residence, Martin Bean, former uh, vice chancellor at RMIT, founder and chairman of FutureLearn. Um, some fascinating insights from Maria and Martin on Friday, Friday if you're in higher ed. Otherwise, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us for the early birds in Perth as well, Claire included. Thank you. Uh, congrats to the 50, kudos to the hundreds of teams across the region who are working in education, technology and innovation. Fantastic. Thanks very much for the working, Pat, and all the stuff that you guys do. Thanks, David. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.